Hey, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. This season, we've been talking about marketing, and today we are going to talk about TikTok. TikTok, I know. I didn't think I'd be talking about this either, but I have the most amazing guest who is doing incredible stuff on TikTok, and I think you're going to see amazing uh, parallels and ideas for what you can be doing with your content based on her successes there on TikTok. So I first saw TikTok videos on a Twitter when people were sharing them on Twitter. And you've probably seen them, I think for most people, the first place that they saw uh, TikTok videos wasn't actually on that social medium. They saw it uh, somewhere else, which says a lot about the shareability of that content. Well, last week I saw a TikTok video on LinkedIn, meaning it was had a, a business content. Now it was funny and cute, but it had business um, intention. So I think we're gonna see a lot of um, evolution in uh, TikTok, and if not literally, then in um, its influence on the way people create content. So there's a few things that are really critical here. Uh, when I have clients who say, I want to be on um, Instagram, I will ask, are your you know, are corporate buyers on Instagram? Is that where they are? Or if they want to be on Twitter, I'm like, um, is this really where your perfect clients are? If so, then be there. But just keep in mind, you want to be on the social media that are um, followed by your perfect prospects. But a good reason to be on Instagram is that it forces you to make your content visual. A good reason to be on Twitter is that it forces you to make your content concise. And TikTok is like the unholy marriage of all of those things coming together. Your your content needs to be short. Uh, it's less than uh, video-based content, less than 59 seconds, right? They've just recently um, turned it up to, uh, to 59 seconds. Um, so it's got to be visual. It has to be concise and it has to like make a point within that amount of time or tell a story, tell a joke, show a funny thing uh, in a really, really short amount of time. So I think that is super interesting for thinking about how do we make our content shorter, more concise, more incisive in a teeny tiny amount of time. So my guest today is completely amazing. Her name is Amanda Yeager, and she is an award-winning morning news anchor in Arkansas, my hometown, my home state, uh, and a social media influencer with over 1.3 million followers on social media. Known for being very open and relatable, which she is, you're going to love her, Amanda has created a brand of authenticity above all. Amanda is also a former Miss America contestant who was a national finalist for her extensive service work. So I'm really excited to uh, to share our conversation with you. Here's what I want you to listen for. If you're a consultant, you're thinking, oh, I made it all about TikTok. Here's what I want you to hear. Um, listen for how she gets attention fast in like 15 second videos. Um, listen for how she chooses her content, what she actually, you know, she's creating content every single day, short form content every single day. So how does she decide um, what to create? Uh, and also she has done something really amazing. She's very astute about her personal brand. So how did she figure out what that was and what's included in it and what isn't? So that's what I really want you to hear. Keep an eye out on LinkedIn for TikTok videos to start appearing because I have a feeling uh, that um, maybe there's some of uh, the, the younger set are going to be doing this first, but it's a really cool medium for making a point fast and it's attention getting. It just is pattern interrupting to see a TikTok video. So I hope you'll enjoy our conversation. I sure did. And um, this is Amanda Yeager. So Amanda, super excited to talk with you about this topic. Can you, just for our uh, listeners and viewers who are not super familiar with TikTok, tell us like, what is it? TikTok is kind of the best of both worlds between Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Very short form video content that's very visual, very personable, and is an opportunity for individuals to create a brand, for businesses to create a brand. It's really the newest, hottest thing in social media, but it's here to stay. So when you say short form, you're not kidding. Like this is super short form. That's right. A lot of people have the idea that you have to do videos that are multiple minutes long, but I have found the most success in doing TikToks that are 10 seconds long or 15 seconds max. Some people can do 30, but really that's the limit. TikTok recently uh, made it to where you could do up to 60 seconds, but it's very rare that people still do that. 
I've seen a few that are 59 seconds and we'll, we'll get into content in a minute, but I feel like if people are familiar with TikTok, it's because of, uh, it's because they probably saw it on another medium, right? So somebody put it onto Twitter or onto Facebook and somebody saw a cute, short, funny video that was um, portrait shaped, right? That's kind of the, the way the TikToks look. Right, absolutely. I mean, we're used to going on YouTube and having to turn our phones horizontal to view videos and TikTok is totally different. It's how you're already using your phone. So I think a lot of people really like that. That makes sense. So what inspired you to start a channel? Well, my work, I work for a television station and they were doing a TikTok on behalf of the station, just like a little fun thing. And I was like, took part in that, you know, and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. Maybe I'll try a TikTok. I posted a couple really lame videos. I didn't know what I was doing yet. And then I just kind of walked away from it and didn't think twice. And then as I started doing more news stories about how people were going viral on TikTok and how it was becoming more popular, I was like, okay, I probably need to get it together and really figure this thing out. So I posted a couple videos um, and then really overnight, I started seeing millions of views. And that was not even a year ago. It was 10 months or 11 months ago, max. And so it was, uh, I've learned a lot in that time, um, but also it was truly just an overnight kind of thing. So it's, it's a lot of fun. A million views is like crazy and like brain breaking. Uh, we know there's some influencers out there who get that. And now it turns out like you're that influencer who gets a million views. So what's the, what were the early videos that were so groundbreaking and that got all those views? Well, I think it really started out with me doing a video about something people ask me about all the time. And that's my news voice, which really is my actual voice. And that's kind of the funny thing about it is people always say, what does your real voice sound like? And I'm like, ta-da, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so I did a video about that and how people say, you don't look like how your voice sounds. Uh, something that I thought is pretty, I don't know, general, but yeah. that's that first video that just took off. So then I started doing some videos centered around my voice. I pretended to be Siri because I can kind of do a Siri voice. I started doing some clips about behind the scenes with news and I realized uh, that's the thing because I started getting views up to 13 million per video in some cases, all centered around my voice or the job that I do. And so once I kind of figured out, ah, this is what the people want to see. I've been able to just build and expand upon that. And how would you kind of describe what it is they want to see? I mean, what category is that? Well, right when you go to my page, I pretty much give you a description. TV news behind the scenes, uh, TV news examples. I mean, it's just really all about behind the scenes, belly laughs, a lot of fun. And so I try to make it as clear as I can right when people go to my page what they're going to get. And so that's what I do. Vocal stuff, TV news, behind the scenes and a little bit of like Q&A too about what it's like working in TV as well. Uh, that's amazing. And I feel like what you're, what you're saying and talking about is a personal brand. And I, that's what I want to ask you about next. But before we get into that, what I want to share with my audience is the reason I wanted to have you on is because you clearly have hit on something um, and you're doing it in a really professional style. It would be easy to find TikTok people who I would not want to model what they're doing. But I feel like you're showing us how like a professional could use this medium to connect with your audience. Uh, and that's amazing. And I think uh, the the authenticity that you bring to what you're doing, um, you're connecting with them in, in a, that real way, like uh, telling them what they really wanna know. Uh, and then when we look at what that actual content is, I think that's also so compelling. So the, the, the two areas that I really wanna focus on with you are uh, your personal brand, how you've built it, how it's evolved, what you've discovered about it, and then how you're doing content. Because I think that both of those areas are things that whether um, my audience of consultants has any intention of ever going to TikTok or not, I think we can take a lot of what's working there because it's shaping um, social media, it's shaping attention spans, it's shaping how uh, people expect video to be done. Uh, and we can uh, port that over into whatever social medium we're using. So let's start with personal brand. What I just heard from you is you, uh, at the top of your channel, you say, here's what you can expect from me, and then you deliver it. How has that evolved over the time that you've been on TikTok these 10 months? I think when I started TikTok, I was really trying to figure out, okay, there are multiple facets to my personality. What can I do to make this cohesive? So it's not these videos that are kind of all over the place. Yeah. And so I, you know, I'm, I, 
like to think I'm kind of funny sometimes. <laughs> and so I try to do some videos that were more humorous. Um, you know, I try to do some videos showcasing my work, you know, in TV news. And then I try to do some videos just showcasing the cool things that I can do with my voice. Uh, and so once I started realizing, okay, I need to find videos that can kind of bring all of that together. That's when I really started to hit the nail on the head. And so mm -hmm. I started keeping my videos um, really under those three things. I'm either going to make you laugh, I'm going to teach you something, or I'm going to show you something unique. And so mm -hmm. if it doesn't fit into one of those three categories, I probably am not going to post it. And that's I love that brand off. clarity. What I always love about brand clarity is when you can say this is in and this is off brand for me. Mm -hmm. And so I really love um, that. And I've seen that from you. What I, I mean, I think your videos are are so unique in that I just never see anybody talk about that. You know, I've oh, I've never noticed. Uh, uh, I've never thought about where um, a woman news anchor is carrying her microphone pack, uh, and that that's going to be kind of different and unexpected. And to see you kind of. Uh, you know, uh, uh, lift up your skirt and show us where that is uh, tastefully and, right. and again, professionally. Uh, it's a it's a great secret. It feels like we just had like a magic trick happen. So um, those, it feels like those are uh, are some of your best performing ones, yes? It's really the videos where I'm directly responding to what somebody is asking for. So I'm really, it's really an easier way to do videos because the audience often will tell you what they want. And in the mm -hmm. case of TikTok, it's really great because you can directly respond to the comments on other videos that you post. And so when I see something where I'm getting a lot of questions about this or wait, what was that? What's this? I can directly create a video to respond and, and give them something that they would never get before. How many times in your life can you talk to somebody that you see on TV directly mm -hmm. and get a response? It's, mm -hmm. it's just not very common, but now through social media, it is especially TikTok. Uh, yeah, and it makes me wonder why more people aren't doing it. Um, you've talked about how it's been kind of received at your station and you know, TV, especially TV news and local TV news are kind of, I guess they're as old school as it gets. Um, I think it's really innovative of them to have had the idea to do a TikTok channel in the first place, but you talked about kind of where is their outer edge of um, kind of innovation and receptivity to what you're doing. Right. I think overall in the news industry, there's always this really difficult challenge of wanting to be personable and authentic because people are watching you in their homes almost every single night or morning, but also wanting to maintain this level of professionalism and credibility, especially when you're yeah. on TV as a journalist. Yeah. And so I think for a lot of people, it's caused some arguments or disagreements about how do you do both without flirting the line too much on one side or the other. So for me, it's about if I feel comfortable, I'm probably going to share it. If I would feel comfortable sharing something on television to people all over my city, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to feel comfortable sharing it on any of my social media pages too. And I feel like that's been really successful trying to find that balance, but I understand it is hard. It's not easy, but it's just something you have to work at. And common sense, honestly, kind of plays a big role. If you wouldn't and want your, your aunts and uncles to find out that you're saying something or doing something, you know, Exactly. So, <laughs> so you have uh, those as kind of your brand um, uh, qualifiers or brand parameters of like um, respectability and uh, the, the aunt uncle factor. Um, uh, do those align with what the station expects? Because you're in Arkansas, where I'm from, and uh, I know it's kind of can be kind of a conservative place in terms of like how far out there you want to go and some of the topics that you've covered. So have, have has anybody ever addressed with you like, hey, that was a little too far or wow, what's going on? Luckily, I guess I've had pretty good judgment about what would be too far, uh, but my station really has been so supportive in saying, hey, we trust you, we want you to be authentic, we want you to do what's comfortable. As long as you represent yourself and the station well, you can have that creative liberty. And so that has been very freeing for me because some places don't do that. And so to have that freedom and autonomy to create has made me enjoy my job more and I think has helped me produce better content as well. And is it uh, affecting the, when, when you go out to do a story uh, and when you're out interacting with the public, I mean, you must be a rock star now there. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm still in Little Rock, Arkansas, but <laughs> it is funny. I posted a TikTok a, a couple of months ago about, I was driving through a Starbucks like I do every day because I'm addicted, it's just the truth. Mm -hmm. And I went to go order, she goes, you're that news person. And I pause and think, oh, she watches me on TV. And then she goes, from TikTok. And that's when I was like, wow, people are recognizing me in my own community, not necessarily 
on the channel that I'm on, but on my social media and that can bring them to the channel that I work for. So it really started to click in that moment and it's happened other times too at the mall or a restaurant. It's, it's, it's happened more than I ever thought it would. It's, I think it's amazing. And you've done, you know, what's more powerful than any channel is an, um, any, you know, marketing always wins and you're really winning the marketing war right now. And I feel like you're probably doing it better than your actual channel is. Um, and, you know, uh, behind the scenes, I feel like I always want to tell someone that you have many monetization opportunities, as I'm sure you know, you and I've discussed um all of the brands that are approaching you and uh, what kind of a future you might have with them based on the brands that are coming to you. What does that tell you about the brand that you've created? Like who do they believe is your audience um, and what, uh, what kind, what, without anything specific, what kind of brands are um, want to be represented by you? Something that I strategically did as I started to consistently grow on TikTok was not box myself so far into one category that I would be limited in that aspect. So while it's important to have a niche or a couple niches, you don't want to box yourself in uh, into where it, you're not able to do a lot of things. So what I did, which I feel was really smart of, of me to do, was make my brand about my voice and, and the power that I have behind my voice. And so I've had so many different types of brands reaching out to me because they realized I could be a spokesperson for just about anything that I actually believe in. I do get a lot of you know, calls from people that are interested in me marketing clothing or makeup just because my appearance yeah. is something I talk about a lot on TV. Um, no makeup many times because I just don't care. Um, and so that happens happen, hair and things like that. But also people that are having companies for telehealth would like me to be a spokesperson or people that wanting, wanting me to do voice work for mm -hmm. various advertisements. So I, I feel like it's been really interesting in that aspect to see how many different types of brands have really reached out to me. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's something I, I did purposefully try to do, even though I can't take brand deals at this point, just because of the code of ethics for journalists right now. Right, right, right. But you know, the future is bright. Yeah, you um, know <laughs> Uh, and I do think it's interesting, the topics that you cover. So just share a little bit for those who haven't seen it, you're doing um, body positivity, um, you know, self-acceptance. I think, uh, you know, I think you've responded also, you've had a little bit of negative comments that you've responded to in a very positive way. So talk a little bit about that, because I think it's very empowering and um, the opportunities that we have as women to influence other women and um, young women and children, I think are really big. Yeah. Uh, one of the initial videos that I did that really got a lot of traction and had, you know, millions of views was me taking off my makeup on camera because I get so many comments from videos that I post while I'm at work. You have so much makeup on. Why do you wear so much makeup? Which that's a necessity of being on TV in front of like the brightest lights in the yeah. world. But I wanted to show people, look, okay, yeah, that's what I do for television, but I'm not ashamed of myself. That's not why I'm covering my face. It's just because it's a part of the job. So if you really want to say that, watch me strip down all of my makeup to totally natural and see that that's not where the source of my confidence comes from. And that has been really cool to do because a lot of women have messaged me privately saying that I gave them courage to do that and not to feel so self-conscious about going out in public without their makeup. And so I try to do a lot of videos where I'm either taking off my makeup or I, you know, doing a reversal of the makeup just coming off and, and to really empower women, like you said, to see that like, yes, I'm on, on TV, I'm a D-list celebrity, whatever you want to call it, but I, I'm showing people that just because you're on TV doesn't mean that you can't be comfortable in your own skin. So that has been a big priority of mine. I'll even do videos about being bloated. <laughs> Can I just be honest? I had some people comment on my videos and they were like, you look pregnant. I'm like, well, I just ate like a ton of fried chicken. And like, to be honest, I'm bloated right now. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on. And I just don't care. Cause you know what, I'm, it's like, I've shared my weight. I wrote my weight down my pant size, everything on a TikTok, because I just want people to realize you can say whatever you want. It's not going to affect my confidence level. And I hope wow. that it doesn't affect other young girls out there. 
It's super powerful. It's amazing, isn't it? What a, what a seemingly small thing like that, uh, like the ripple effects that that can have. Uh, and also, I, I don't know why it is, but uh, it's just interesting to watch another woman put on her makeup <laughs> and be like, wow, oh, really? Oh, hadn't thought of that. I, know, I, don't, know what, I don't know what the male equivalent of that would be, but it was yeah, just like- I don't know, playing video games maybe? I don't know. <laughs> must be that, right? <laughs> So I, I'd love to talk now about content and we've, uh, you know, you, it's almost inextractable to talk about content and brand because they're so interwoven, but uh, there's so many particulars of the way that you're creating content for TikTok and also um, what you're selecting and things like that. And wh what you told me that was really fascinating um, and I felt gave you an unfair advantage, aside from the fact that you're in makeup every day, like most of us are not, so you're always camera ready uh, or more often camera ready than the rest of us. But uh, you talked about as a journalist, you're used to taking eight hours of um, reporting from the field and cutting that down into a one and a half minute segment. So that, that I, I mean, I, I feel like I'd just be overwhelmed trying to do something like that. So how has that helped you to create like micro content the way that you do? Well, like you mentioned, a minute and 30 second news story is an entire day or multiple days of work, hours of interview content sometime that I'm having to log through. And so that has taught me a lot about really extrapolating what is most important in a story, uh, and what people can relate to in a short amount of time, because our attention spans are shorter nowadays. So being able to take a large amount of work put it down to a minute and 30 seconds helped a lot because like I mentioned earlier on TikTok, really 15 seconds or less is the way that you want to go. And so I think a lot of people get caught up in the details of things or like feel like they have to do a little too much, a little extra. And really it's about finding something that's going to connect with someone instantly because just as fast as they're, you know, consuming content, they're swiping, you know, next, next, next. You have to be able to catch them right away and you don't have a lot of time to do it. And so really thinking about what can I do that's sort of simplistic in a short amount of time to catch your attention, I think that's really where you start creating good content. Um, depressingly, I'll say, yes, I agree with you. After we spoke, I went and looked at reels um, and I felt myself scrolling with the finger like this. Um, and you had said, especially the first you know, five to seven seconds. And I noticed at the time I thought, oh, please, no. And then as I was scrolling the reels, it was exactly as you'd said, like if some, something starts to happen in, within seven seconds or if something is intriguing, then I'm with it. And if there's some sort of pause or I'm like, this is boring, how can it be boring in only seven seconds? So what do you do in the first part for, how do you decide how to open your videos? Yeah, uh, it kind of depends, but I usually open with uh, a line. Like there was one video I did, I think it got like 500,000 plus views. And it was response to a question about when do I sleep? Because I wake up at three in the morning to go to my morning show job. And I started out the video with, when do you sleep? Cut. That's the question everybody keeps asking me with my morning job waking up at 3 a.m. So in that immediate, you know, somebody's scrolling and they're like, when, you know, what is it? What is this person doing? What is she saying? I got to listen more. And that was really successful. So um, I, I mentioned to you, I think when we were just kind of talking casually, having quick cuts, yes. like a lot of people will do just 15 seconds straight of content. You have to have some sort of little minor cuts in the video to keep people engaged. So I'll say, when do you sleep? You might be wondering, cut. When do I actually sleep when I wake up at 3 a.m.? Cut. Well, let me tell you. You know, it's you because then you're like hanging on to every word that you're saying, right? Mm -hmm, so that, mm -hmm. that's a great, easy piece of advice that can instantly get you a better engagement on your videos. So in the world that I'm used to, uh, when I'm working with people on uh, doing a one minute or a two minute video, which is really I ideal in our world for, right. um, for what I would call top of the funnel, when it's kind of brand new to people who don't necessarily know you, that's the kind of thing that you're doing. I would talk about opening with a question, which I think is really intriguing. You can also open with a firm statement. Um, and then uh, uh, having movement in it. And I think that what you just demonstrated, the, two, the, the TikTok version of that. Uh, and, and then I love kind of just chopping through to, you know, it's a few key, in, in your case, sentences. I mean, it sounds like it's about three sentences. Um, and I also love the way that the graphics on TikTok replace the need for dialogue. What it does is it acknowledges that we, we're consuming from multiple points. So I can hear you say something while I'm reading something and I can see you doing something else. So how are you, how do you maximize those elements without doing something that's overwhelming? Well, something that I like to do, think about when you're on your phone, for example, how often do you actually have the volume up? 
A lot of the times when we're at work or in social situations, we have the volume down. Uh, so something I do like to do is add some sort of captions onto my videos, which you can do directly in the app when you're editing. There are some apps out there too that can help do some automatic captions. Sometimes they cost money. I, my videos are so short, I can usually just type them up myself really quickly. That's something too. So if, if they don't wanna be overwhelmed by the sound and, and the visuals and this or that, which is pretty common, we all really have our phones on silent, use yeah. captions to capture people's attention. Sometimes if they're watching something and they, don't, they can't hear it, they'll probably just scroll, but if they have something to read that they can see what's going on with, that can be really helpful as well. You don't wanna overdo all of the different things that TikTok offers, because you can have a background image, you can have you, you can have text, you can have all this stuff. Simplicity mm -hmm. has really been key, but also thinking about how the viewer is experiencing the content that they're taking in, how you as an individual do. And I think that can help kind of drive what you want to produce. Definitely. That's, uh, I think, especially for LinkedIn, uh, where a lot of us are, are making videos for that medium. Um, you know, people are at work. Well, we used to be at work, um, but they're in, more in a work mode. And almost everyone has uh, everything on silent and captions are essential on any LinkedIn video. Yeah. Um, how planful are you with your content? Is it like a spontaneous idea that comes to you today or do you kind of um, scope it out in an editorial calendar? I'm always thinking about TikTok ideas, but a lot of it is more spontaneous based on what questions people are asking me on my videos that I think would be interesting to respond to, uh, things that are trending. I watch other videos too and see, oh, that video got a lot of interaction and I could produce something similar to it, but with my own twist. So I'm always on the lookout but it's still very spontaneous based on what the trends are currently and what people are saying on my videos so that I'm actually communicating with them. It, and that makes it easier too, because I'm not always having to be so creative that it's like, man, I'm just so dry on ideas. There, there are ways that you can just see what the audience is saying to help you, to help you get that together. Uh, what are ways that you spark engagement with your videos? Well, I will put in the captions, direct questions to people. So like if I'm answering a question that somebody has asked me, I'll put in the caption, other questions. What do you think? Do you like, did I do a good job? Would you, would you get this? So people do read those captions and then say, you know, go to your comments and are consistently engaging. That's a very easy way. Sometimes you can also just write it uh, in the cap or in the actual text on the video, um, the closed captioning type of thing, you know, asking them a direct question. You really have to solicit that from other people. They don't always just do that on their own. So be thinking of ways that you can engage people with questions in your captions. That's, that's super successful. Has anything that you've learned or done on TikTok influenced the way you're doing journalism on TV? A thousand percent. I've seen so much success on TikTok, just being very conversational, having fun, showing personality and authenticity. I incorporate that into my everyday job. Yes, I have to read, unfortunately, sometimes very sad or depressing news articles, especially amidst coronavirus. But any chance that I get to say, all right, now that we're taking a breather from that, let's just be real and let's talk. And I feel like it's, it's really worked out really well. We, get, we have a text messaging system at my station, for example, where people can text in during our live Ooh. shows. And they, they do. And they'll say, I'll be like, hey, text me. What do you think about this? You know, just very conversational. And it really it produces a ton of engagement, even during the live shows. That's incredible. Now, do you feel like you've gotten a younger audience or have you inspired an older audience to do something that the younger people are doing? It's a mix of both. Initially, when I started on TikTok back last April, it was more of a younger audience. Some people saying, I don't ever watch TV news, but I want to now because you're so fun and this is so much fun. But I think when coronavirus hit in March, the audience on TikTok changed dramatically because there were all of these millennials that came on there as well, or even older, that were trying out this new social media site everyone was talking about, and they had more time on their hands than they'd ever had before. So I really have seen a shift in the demographics on TikTok and people communicating with me on the site uh, just because of how times have changed and the influence of the app has, has changed dramatically just in the last year. It's really incredible. Um, in terms of the, your, your journey on TikTok, and if um, you were encouraging someone to um, start doing videos there, if we could, if we could skip th past your learning curve a little bit and, uh, and begin, what would, would be kind of like the first three steps that you would advise? Really think about who you are and what you want to put out into the world. 
Don't just do things because they're trendy. Don't just do things because you think it'll get a lot of views and likes. Really figure out, okay, what are the three main things or you know, the two main things I really wanna put out into the world that kind of all fall under this. Figure that out first. Second of all, try some different things. It's okay to experiment a little with your first video. See what gets good engagement. And if you see something that's getting a lot more engagement than the others, really try to build upon that. Think about what was it about this video? Was it that particular topic? Was it the production? And then create similar videos to that and see if you get the same response. Don't be afraid to experiment a bit and really listen to what the audience is saying and seeing what the engagement is on those videos. And I think that that will help direct you exactly where you need to go. But don't just start putting out random stuff without any thought put into it. You will just end up tiring yourself and you'll want to give up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so if... Uh you know, someone's got their first 20 or so videos out and they're really wanting to have a jump in the number of followers they have. What's, what have you seen that has caused those jumps that, that were things within your control? Well, one thing that I recommend is on the app, you can actually change from just a traditional account, go into your settings and go to pro account. When you go to a pro account, that allows you to see all of your analytics and insights. So you can see when your audience is on the app most during the day um, and you can see where they're from, what time zones they're in, things like that. And so that has helped me a lot because now that I see the analytics of the, you know, how long they're watching my videos, when they're watching my videos, I really only post videos at certain times now because I know that's when I have the most engagement. I only post videos at that, like I said, under 15 second link because I see that people aren't watching past 15 seconds. So go in there, try to get that pro account, uh, see what your analytics are, and that will really help you understand your audience better and then help you create content in a, in a more meaningful way. Awesome. I love these tips. Um, Amanda, I would love for you to share, like as a person, what has TikTok uh, uh, given or done for you? What has this experience done for you? On a personal level, this has really just confirmed what I'd always been passionate about, which is breaking stereotypes about what people on TV are like or what pageant people are like and showing the world that you can be authentic and real and have a lot of fun and still be taken seriously and still be respected. Because I feel like that, that was a, a very fine line that I walked and I was trying to prove to people, look, no, this is what people actually want. They want people like this. And so I feel like for me, it's just been very comforting to know, okay, I can just be myself. I can take off the makeup. I can be silly and fun. And I know that it's going to be okay. And because I don't want to create content if I have to fake it every day. That would be absolutely exhausting. And I think for me, it's just been exciting too. It's made my life more fun. It's made me more ambitious in my goals and my career, seeing that once you succeed in something, the opportunities are endless. And so I think that's really exciting. And I, I honestly don't know what's to come next, but I feel more empowered than ever for whatever it is. Yay. I think, uh, I think it's a very bright future for you. You really are somebody who is leaning into the, being the youest you you can be. And there's nothing more resonant than someone who is truly being themselves and um, doing what they do. So uh, I wanna thank you so much, Amanda, for your time today and for your inspiration and uh, for the model you set about what's possible. And I, it's in, in a, an unexpected medium of TikTok. And I really hope that everyone who is um, watching this can take the um, the very universal lessons of what you've done. Some seem specific to TikTok, but that really you can apply them to your business and to video uh, and to anything and um, build a, a real personal brand that resonates with millions. It's possible. It's definitely possible. And I would also just recommend use the content that you're creating and, and use it on other sites too. I take a lot of my TikTok videos and that's helped me grow my Instagram brand. And so you really can cross reference different pieces of material to different social media sites uh, to make your life easier and to expand your audience as well. I just, I wanna leave you with that tip too, to take what you're doing and realize people in all different audiences, they'll wanna see it if it's doing well on at least one of those platforms. Yes, repurposing is yeah. a great, great tip. Awesome, thank you, Amanda. Thank you. And I'm wishing our listeners a profitable and joyful consulting business. Thanks for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell to get video updates. Thanks.